Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We extend a special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Welcome. Uh, Please take a moment to settle yourself in and gather what you need. And we will begin with confession and forgiveness. Congregation, please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess... Here is a flood of grace. Our love, out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> I have lots of announcements this morning. Um, the first thing I want to bring to your attention, though, is the front of your um, bulletin insert, your weekly bulletin insert. You'll notice that down at the bottom now we've added a little box um, for a question of the week for our Life of Faith initiative. So, um, this, this week's question, what small thing did you do to brighten someone's life this past week? Great question to think about how it is that you do ministry in your everyday life. Um, these will also be posted on Facebook, so if you're interested in having a conversation or just sharing some of your thoughts on this, we encourage you to get on our Facebook page and answer that and see what we can all come up with together. So we'll have one of these each week, so be sure to check the front of your insert each week for that new question. 
Um, we are getting really close to Easter, aren't we? So coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, please be checking the, the calendar, the online, um, your insert and all that for, other, for information about your weekly email, for information about what times all of our Holy Week services are. We will, of course, have a Monday, Thursday service, a Good Friday service, an Easter vigil at 3 Easter morning worships. So uh, be sure to check the, the schedule for those times and we're, we're looking really forward to all of that, uh, all of that time together. Um, today, after worship, we have a business quarterly meeting. Um, if you have any questions uh, about finances or business for the executive council, I encourage you to stay after church um, so that you can talk through those. Um, and then also today, we have coffee in the courtyard with, at Haven for Hope. So some of you have brought some cookies, which we're so grateful for. If you are interested in going down to Haven for Hope to help with cookies in the courtyard, please meet here at 1 o'clock, and you all will ca caravan down together. Um, and I believe that is all the announcements I have for us this morning, so let us turn our attention to the reading of Scripture. A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 5. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. I invite our children to come forward for the children's message this morning, and if you come up, I promise you get a candy. Good morning. Come on up. All right. Okay, now that you're up here, I think I changed my mind. I think I don't want to give you candy after all. Mm. Wow, well, does, how does that make you feel? Fine. Sad. Yeah, I told you I was going to give you candy, and now I changed my mind, and it's just right here. You're a little mad. Yeah, yeah you do. Uh huh. So sometimes people break their promises, don't they? Have you guys ever broken a promise? I have. Yeah. How about you guys? Anybody ever broke a promise before? Raise your hands, everybody. Confession time. We all confess at the beginning. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we break our promises. Here's the good news. God never breaks his promises to us. But sometimes we break our promises, and so we have to do something to fix that, right? What are the things that we do when somebody's upset because we broke a promise? You say you're sorry, right? Yeah, we say sorry. We say I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I broke my promise, didn't I? I told you I was going to give you candy, and then I changed my mind. Well, I'm sorry about that. What else do I need to do, though, to kind of fix that? Yeah, I need to say it like I mean it, be sincere, not just like, I'm sorry, and not really mean it, right? Yeah, what about, um, like, if, if, you, if, if I said, well, you know what, I broke my promise, but maybe I should go ahead and give you candy after all, like, that maybe fix it a little bit? Yeah, I can, I can go ahead and do that, and, but you know, when sometimes in life when we make promises, then we break them. It takes a little while to fix that, right? Because people then have a hard time believing us or their feelings are hurt and it takes them a little while to not be hurt anymore. I, got orange. I love your orange dress. That's right. And so sometimes it's hard when we break our promises and somebody gets upset with us. But the good news is we can try to work at fixing that, okay? We can, we can apologize, we can do things to make it better, and we can give people the patience and the time that they need to reconcile. That's a big word. Reconcile is kind of like a big word for making it better, making our relationship okay again. The best news, though, is that God is already reconciled with us, so when we mess up with God, it doesn't take God any time, and God knows that our hearts that we're sorry and... Um, and it's not like it is with people. So we're really grateful for that. So would you pray with me, please? Dear God, sometimes we mess up and we, uh, and we don't follow through on our promises. Help us to understand that you always follow through on your promises and to be grateful for that. And help us to work at fixing things when we break our promises. Help us to reconcile with others and with you. We pray this in your name. Amen. And now each of you can pick out a candy. All right, there you go. And you can go have a seat with your parents. Make sure you ask them before you eat it, okay? There you go. All right, congregation, please stand for the gospel acclamation.
Now, among those who went, oh, sorry, the Holy Gospel according to John. There we go. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some of the Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son. Truly, I tell you, truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Um, I want to start out this morning by just sharing a little bit of, of, of my hopes for um, what the sermon time is all about for you all each Sunday that I preach. Um, and it actually is tied to some of the baptismal promises that we've been learning about here in Lent. Um, our second promise is to hear the word, the Lord's word, hear the word of God, right? And so hopefully each Sunday when you come, you hear some of God's word through the scripture and then also through how we talk about it, right? Um, but, I, you know, and I know I sit out there too sometimes and sometimes I'm like, oh, it's a really great sermon. Don't ask me what they said, right? <laughs> I know we're all there sometimes. However, um, the hope is that you will hear the word of God and then promise number two, proclaim the word of God to others through thought thought and deed, or word and deed. So hopefully, during this Lenten season, as we've kind of gone over the same thing quite a bit, we've been talking a lot about the same things, hopefully, that's going to be something that will then stick with you so that you not only hear it with your ears, but you internalize it and then can proclaim it. So we're going to go through today a little bit of a journey um, on what we've talked about through the season of Lent, because Again, unbelievably, Easter is only two weeks away, and next weekend is Palm Sunday. I have no idea where the time goes sometimes. Uh, I thought when my children moved out, time would slow down, but actually it just got faster. No one tells you that. <laughs> so today, let's talk about um, a little bit about Lent as we get ready to prepare for our Easter celebration. There are three things that we've kind of covered over the last several weeks. Um, baptism, especially God's part. Um, the other covenants that God made with God's people in the Old Testament, and then back to baptism and what our part of the covenant is that we have with God. And so let's start talking about baptism. Um, and this is an appropriate conversation for Lent. I know sometimes it, it's felt this year a little bit um, more upbeat than other Lenten seasons. We're often used to Lent being somber and reflective, but it's also a very appropriate time to talk about baptism because Good Friday and Easter are the reason we have baptism. It's not just through Easter, but also through Good Friday. Jesus had to die in order to rise so that our baptism could be made possible. We celebrate that we're baptized into Christ's death and then into Christ's resurrection. And his death is a very painful earthly death. Sometimes just like ours, we also die we are dust, and to dust we shall return, as we talked about the very first day of Lent on Ash Wednesday. But then we're also baptized into Christ's resurrection, so we live 
because God wants us to live. God renews our covenant by giving us the grace to continue living because of Christ. And at the same time we're baptized, we're inheritors of God's kingdom. We are baptized into the family of God as a child of God. We're fully reconciled with God and with each other. Not just forgiven and washed clean, but we're brought back into right relationship with each other, or reconciled, our big church word, reconciled relationship. We just talked a little bit about in the children's sermon today when when we, when we hurt someone or we, or we turn away from something or we break a commandment or whatever, um, we don't just say we're sorry, but we work to make it right again. And of course, it's never going to be exactly the same, but we can work to make it right again. Um, one of the other big church words we use to talk about what happens um, with this is atonement that we atone for our sins. And that was a lot about what the Old Testament covenant was about. You break the law, you atone for your sins. But when we think about what Jesus does for us, I like to look at the word a different way. Atonement, when broken apart, can read at one meant. And so what happens in our baptism and this covenant that God makes with us, or the new covenant that we have with God, we are brought together and made one again. We are reconciled with God and with each other. And this new covenant is kind of what Jeremiah talks about in our Old Testament reading today. I think it's a very important reading, um, and so I want to go over it again. So please listen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand, to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is part of the new covenant that God makes with us that we celebrate in baptism. But speaking of covenants, that takes us to the second thing that we've talked a lot about during Lent. All of our Old Testament readings have had to do with covenants that God has made with God's people. So when we go back all the way to the beginning, the first covenant we talked about was the flood. After the flood, Noah promises never to flood the earth. God promises Noah that he will never flood the earth again. And then when we move further into Genesis, God covenants with Abram, who then changes his name to Abraham, that um, he will have many descendants, many descendants, and a place for their people to live. And then through a lot of things, the people lose their place, but then uh, the Lord returns them, takes them out of Egypt and the slavery that they've been into in Exodus, takes them into the wilderness and frees them from that slavery and gives them the Ten Commandments. And those Ten Commandments were a way to live with each other and to live in relationship with God as a whole new creation. Um, So we've gone from a covenant about never flooding the earth again to having many descendants, and now, adding on top of that, we have these Ten Commandments for how to live together. And of course, we're not so great at always abiding by the commandments or always following God, right? We kind of sometimes get a little mixed up. And so we have story after story, and one of those stories is how the Israelite people began to complain again and talk about how they just wanted to go back to Egypt and be in slavery and forgetting what God had done for them. And so the snakes start biting them. But once again, God comes and makes a covenant and says, put up this snake, this symbol of a snake, and when, it, uh, when the snakes bite you, you look at it and you will live. So once again, God preserves the people, gives them life, even when they make mistakes. And that all brings us to this new covenant that is shared in the, by the prophet uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah talks about this um, towards the end, toward, closer on towards um, the time of Jesus. It's almost like a transitional time. This covenant serves as the transition between all those Old Testament covenants into what's going to be the new covenant um, through the Gospels. 
It's not that we throw out all the other covenants God's made with us. Clearly, we need to abide by the Ten Commandments and live that way. But God's covenant is always about relationship. And so when it was getting hard to figure out how to be in relationship and how to make that right, God makes a new covenant with us. And so it continues all the other covenants before, but it also then includes a measure of grace because we are so prone to forgetting about our covenant, our part in the covenant. God's covenant with us never wavers. God always keeps God's covenant with us. It's us that have a trouble. But this brings us to our part. So our part of the new covenant, not just all the old stuff that we've learned way back at the beginning of the Bible, but the new covenant that we receive in baptism, we have a part in that. We have these five promises that we say. God is always faithful to us, and God's commitment and faithfulness and fulfillment of promises is not dependent on our fulfilling our part of the bargain. However, we have this opportunity to live a life of faith. We often waver, and, and so this is a great way that, Jesus, that God has made possible for us to receive grace, not by abolishing the law, but by Jesus fulfilling the law for us so that we can have this grace. So let's talk about then our part of the covenant that we work to do, but not always perfect at it, okay? So we've listed these five promises, or well, so far we've listed four. I'm going to give you the fifth baptismal promise today, which is to live among God's uh, faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I didn't write it down today. I'm really proud of myself. So, uh, but you guys can do this too. So let's practice together once again, because my hope is that these promises then become something that we lean on and we think about in our daily lives as we live out our life of faith. So say them with me as best you can. They are in the hymnal. I believe it's page 233-ish. So if you want to look, you can cheat a little bit, but I also know that it works better to learn them if you don't look. So let's try to do this together. Say them with me. And just, you know, blah, 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 if you don't really know, just try. Just do the words that you know, okay? So we are to live among God's faithful people, hear the word of God, and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So take a look at those. Uh, take a hymnal if you need to and bring it back next week and, and get those covered. But those are the things that we also, that's our part of the covenant in baptism that we have. And so this whole Lenten season, we've had this opportunity to go back and look at kind of the entirety of scripture all the way up to Jesus' time. We've taken a look at the covenants that God has made with us throughout the Old Testament, and we've seen some of the stories about how that got played out. And then it brings us to Jeremiah that becomes this transition from what happened in the Old Testament, now looking forward to the new, as Jeremiah says, God is going to make this new covenant. And then in our gospel today, the men come to, the disciples come to Jesus and say, these people want to see you, and Jesus says, not now, my time is come. It is now time. And so this is the transition in John's gospel from the old covenant to the new covenant. Jesus knows that his ministry is now moving into that fulfillment phase. And that's where we are headed also with our celebration of what God does for us. So we've had an opportunity to look at these old covenants and the history and the troubles and the warnings but we're also getting the opportunity to look at the promise and the faithfulness of our loving God, our life-giving God. And with Jeremiah, we now look ahead to the new covenant established in the Gospels, which is the good news of Jesus Christ. So in the next few weeks, during Palm Sunday and Holy Week, I hope that you will listen for the ways that this Old Testament story brings to life this covenant, this new covenant that God is making with God's people and has made throughout all time. 
Hopefully this Lenten journey has been a time of connecting the dots through all of Scripture, and perhaps with a clearer picture of what God has done for us. Our hearts will be made new, and our spirits will be renewed. And as Jeremiah prophesies, we will know God in our hearts so that we can see how these baptismal promises that we're learning continually renew us to seek God and serve others every day, everywhere, and with everyone. Amen. See that an earth is dying, grows into ears of grain, grapes that are crushed in the vessel, turned into golden wine. God, through this mystery, grant us faith in our deepest darkness, life in our night and death. We were baptized in Jesus, into his death and grave, to resurrection's promise, praise and eternal life. Heaven's own praises begin here, where you yourself are near us, deep in our night and death. See that in earth is dying, is to bear much fruit. Christ, as we meet at your table, give us the bread of life. Lord, we do thank and adore you, unceasing praise of the ages rises from night and death. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, all... Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into your community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O oh God. 
the mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation, especially our Stephen ministers. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill, and especially those we, we have in our take-home bulletin. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints who have faith inspires us especially Patrick, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another. And if you've joined us online, consider texting someone or giving them a quick call to just share some words of peace with them. In today's Old Testament reading, Jeremiah the prophet speaks for God and says that the law will be written on our hearts and that we will know God. May our giving then also come from our hearts so that we may know our neighbors better. Love. 
Lamb of God, thou died for me. Lamb of God, what wondrous Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for all justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is made ready and all are welcome at the Lord's table. Congregation may be seated at this time. Communion will be distributed uh, by intinction. We'll give you a wafer and you'll hold on to that wafer and dip it in the wine in the clay chalice or the grape juice in the clear chalice. Or you may pick up an individual uh, communion kit from the basket at the front of the aisle. We do have gluten-free wafers. Please let us know if you need a gluten-free wafer and the welcome team will usher you forward.
Congregation, please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into the one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Now, go in peace, share your bread. Thanks. Thanks.